I'd stick to my first proposal to you, okay. which was that the way we do it is one of us asks a question, the other one gives a response to the question, then the other gives a reply to the response, okay. and then the person that didn't ask the question then asks the next question. And then that way, we're asking questions in turn, and we can interrogate as we need to. Okay, that's is fine. That all right. That's fine. Yeah. Yeah. That's all right. Uh, uh, we, 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 we shouldn't go more than five minutes at a time. And we'll is that assume, okay? We'll, we'll yeah? assume that each one of us will act with restraint in terms of how long they're talking. Yeah. Um, try. We'll try not to talk more than than, than five, five minutes. minutes. That's good. Yeah. Try. Yeah. Try. Yeah. Try, I'm not, try, I'm try not, your best. <laughs> I, I am not going to be too picky if you're not too picky, but yeah. at the same time, let's, let's, let's try let's to do not this in a civilized way. Because yeah. too many of the debates here at Speaker's Corner, they descend into ad hominem and they descend into argument about the argument yeah. and about how, the discussion rather than the topic. And let's stick to the topic. That's very important. The Trinity is the topic. We're Good. not going to talk about anything else. We're not talking about the Incarnation. We're not talking about any other doctrine except the Trinity. Fair enough, yeah. Okay, so I ask a question. If you want to ask the first question. Because the topic yeah. is about the Trinity. Uh, so basically my question would be, which part of the Bible, either the Old Testament or the New Testament, which verse or verses advocate about this Trinity? And I don't mean the word Trinity, I mean the concept of Trinity. Uh, and get, correct me if I'm wrong, I believe the concept of Trinity is where these three persons the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost are one being, being, being God. Yes. Okay. So your, your, your definition of the Trinity in the words that you've used are, are words that I agree with. Good. The concept of the Trinity is three hypostasis, which we translate into English as persons, mm -hmm. and one oesis, which is substance or being. being yeah. And in terms of where we find this in the Bible, you've got to understand how Christians use the Bible. We don't use the Bible as a, we, we, uh, in a sense as proof texts. There isn't a verse in the Bible that has a summary definition of the Trinity. The concept of the Trinity is taken from the full reading of scripture that starts in Genesis and ends in Revelation. And in that full reading of the scripture, we balance the verses, we read them as a whole, and then from that, we are, we are presented with a presentation of God, which the church has summarized in a formal statement at the Council of Nicaea 381, which was the, 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 the finalization of that statement. That's a council it, yeah, of Constantinople. It it's called the Nicaean Constantinopolitan Creed. Oh, okay, yeah. It was done yeah. in 381. It was concluded. It started in 325 at Nicaea. Yeah. It concluded in 381 in Constantinople with a formal philosophical statement about what the Bible was teaching, which is the words that you've just used, three persons, one substance, one being. So in that, I would start off by just, just saying, what are the prepositions according to the scripture? And I have certain verses to, to evidence each of them. Firstly, that there is one God. Secondly, that the Father is God, that the Son is God, and that the Holy Spirit is God. And that these three are persons because, now the persons is not in there, but they are persons because they communicate. They speak to one another and they speak to others, mm -hmm. showing personhood. So this is, this is how we understand the scriptures and hopefully as we go forward in the debate, I'll, I'll, I'll bring out the scriptures to show that. Okay, good. Okay, so that's my response. Sorry, so is somebody can... giving time? Oh, well, that wasn't five minutes, I'm sure. That okay, that's enough. fine now. So as long you, as we are... So now you can understand. respond to my response. Okay, so basically my question was, where in the Bible? I know there are councils outside the Bible, councils yeah. of the church, the early church. When I say early, I mean the fourth century. Uh, yeah, and this is what we have. So basically, if there is nothing explicit in the Bible where God advocates that he manifests as three persons, or where any prophet, either in the Old Testament or the New Testament, confirms that there are three persons in the being of God, or any of the apostles, or any of the disciples of Jesus, who confirm this. This is a central core doctrine of, the, of Christianity, from what I understand. If the central core doctrine of the Christianity is not explicitly mentioned in the, in the, in the Bible, then why would you, A, call it the, the central core doctrine of Christianity? B, why would you advocate this to be one of the most important uh, teachings of 
of Christianity and see if no if it was so important why didn't any of the previous messengers or prophets or even Jesus himself or his disciples ever advocate this because you see there are many things in the Bible which have been taught like for example Jesus and his miracles the other prophets and their miracles yes um, all these things that God is one that God is infinite that God is all-knowing yes we know many things about God why didn't anyone ever mention that God is a triune being if this was so important this was core it should at least be mentioned somewhere in the Bible if it is not mentioned in the Bible why would you then call it call it the most important teaching of Christianity and why did the church take nearly 400 years to establish this Trinity doctrine because if the doctrine is really really that important it should clearly be mentioned in the in, in the Bible I mean see for the Muslims Tawheed is the most important concept the Tawheed is not mentioned by word but the concept is that throughout the Quran in Surah Al-Ikhlas yes chapter 112 it clearly mentioned that God is one no way does it mention this three the Trinity or anything else so we don't believe in that we believe in what's in the Quran similarly there are Unitarian Christians who do believe that there is only one God and this one God is what they believe in calling themselves Christians that's fine I mean this is one of the aspects of, of Christianity there are many different uh, what do you say many different uh, sects in Christianity just like there are sects in Islam there are the Jehovah's Witnesses who do not believe God is uh, Trinity and that uh, anyone other than God the Father is God they do not consider Jesus as God may I yeah it's only been two minutes oh sorry yeah okay, okay. but if you feel it's been long no, I no, can no, no, stop yeah? No, yeah yeah I didn't realize it would be time okay so what I'm saying is this if this was such an important doctrine it should clearly be mentioned somewhere in the Bible along the line if it's not explicitly saying for there are three that have witness in heaven the Father the Son and the Holy Spirit and I, I believe there was one particular verse the first John 5 7 yes the Jonah and coma which I don't know somewhere some along the line it was put in there as being part of the scripture and later on when the when the scholars found out that this is actually an interpolation they removed it and they said no this is not in the earliest manuscript in fact the NIV has a clear footnote at the bottom which says that this verse is not found in any manuscript prior to the 14th century uh, in any Greek manuscript before the 14th century so there you go there, there basically has been attempts to prove the Trinity existed in the scripture but uh, it turned out to be basically not true so going back to the uh, the question the first very first question if it is advocated in the Bible please show us clearly where it advocates that these three beings are one not that the remember the Trinity is not it's three persons no that these three persons are co-equal co-eternal and they are one do we see this clearly in the Bible that these persons are co-equal because I can show you contradictions to that particular statement that they are not co-equal that's why I mean now uh, you, you can carry on okay. from there yeah so so as agreed it's now my turn to ask Hashim a question he will give a, re a reply to the question and then I will give a response to his reply Fair enough. he's made a lot of statements there that may be a, a, a connected to how you debate other people because you've asked a lot of questions that I'm not going to immediately reply to so you'll have to bring them in, in one at a time Fair enough, yeah. so my question to you is you made a statement um, are we oh that's not five minutes that that was yeah, if you could give me my full five minutes please. <laughs> what can you say learn to use a stopwatch <laughs> that's fine some people okay thank yeah. you so now I have five minutes yeah. so um, Hashim you have made uh, a, a number of statements there and, and, and one of the key statements that you made that I think is pertinent to this debate is that you said why did it take the church four centuries to uh, um, to come up with the doctrine of the Trinity mm -hmm. now that belies a certain number of assumptions that I'm now going to ask you to prove firstly if they the, the, and the question that I'm going to uh, ask will come at the end but for that statement to be true then that means that the early Christians of the first to the fourth century believed in something other than the Trinity secondly that the doctrine of the Trinity was invented at the Council of Nicaea and so the, the, the question that I would like to ask you now is to bring forth your evidence on, on two points and they're both connected which mm -hmm. is 
what did the Christians believe from the first to the fourth century and what is your evidence for the statements that follow? So evidence what you say they believe from the first to the fourth century. Okay. Uh, and then show me how the Council of Nicaea invents a trinity. Okay. First and foremost, I never use the word the Council invented the trinity. I said it took them four, it took them nearly 400 years to establish the doctrine of the Trinity. So that is the first thing. So it's, it's basically a strongman argument to say that I stated that they invented it in the 4th century or they invented it in the Council of Nicaea or the Constantinople. The, co the question I had, which still hasn't been answered, is where in the Bible do we see this doctrine of the Trinity being advocated? If it is not there, then I want to know and I want you to acknowledge that it is not in the Bible, but it is from outside the Bible. Remember, this is a question. I'm not making a statement. Because on the observation that I've seen, sorry, from, from reading the Bible, I've observed that it is not explicit in the Bible. Or even implicit that, these, that God exists as three persons. So what I'm asking is that, so first and foremost, your question to me was with regards to inventing the Trinity. I did not say it was in them invented in the fourth century. And, and besides, if there were early church fathers who did believe in the Trinity, like the way you believe in the Trinity, from the first and the second century, for example, I think that might be in third century, but from the first and second century, are there any church fathers? I do not claim to know the history of Christianity fully. So maybe you can enlighten us as to which church father or which early Christian actually believed in the Trinity the way you believe in the Trinity today. Okay, so my five minutes. We'll yep. just make sure I do get five minutes this time, if that's okay, clock keeper. Just so the cameras know, the clock keeper is a part of the Islamic Dawah team. So, now, with regards to... No heckling, please. No heckling, please. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Okay, anyway, anyway that was uncalled for, but... Can we start my five minutes again, please? Yeah, start my five minutes again. He's not part of the Dawah team. Guys, guys. Guys, guys. guys let's not quibble over a few things. Thank you. That's fine. Stop Do you want someone else to keep the time? No, it's fine. You trust the Islamic time keeper. Thank you. Okay, okay. okay. ready? Carry on. Go. Start. So, I... I... Hashim's first question to me was, where is a, the doctrine of the Trinity expressed in the Bible? And I clearly stated to Hashim, and it is on record, everyone can zoom back on YouTube and look at my first answer, that the doctrine of the Trinity is taken from the whole reading of the Bible. That there is not one summary verse, that it is taken from a reading of Genesis to Revelations, the theology that is there is taken and that is where Christians get the doctrine of the Trinity from and that this is formalized in a philosophical statement at the Council of Nicaea. Now it is interesting that I asked Hashim to tell me what Christians believe from the first to the fourth century and he avoided that part of my question instead picking up on a red herring about whether he used the word invented or not invented with regards to the Council of Constantinople, Council of Nicaea. He also admitted something that's very important in this debate. He is not a specialist of church history. And yet, what, what, what are we doing with the time, brother? I can't see it. I can't see my time. But it's not been five minutes. Come on. You're, yeah. So, you're just cobble, so, I mean, need to okay, little, so... so like that i can't see the time but I'll, I'll try and carry on okay anyway. it looks like you don't trust so, him do you want to take someone else i i, I would just like him to keep the camera no here. do you want someone else so, to, whom you trust so uh, let me carry on so okay because we're quibbling over small of, things in you know? terms of in terms of hashim yeah he has admitted that he is not a specialist of the church fathers and he is not a specialist of church history and yet there are plenty of videos on youtube some of the channels are the ones that you're probably watching today where hashim has gone round challenging christians on the history of the Trinity, on the history of church teaching, on the teaching of the church fathers. But he has just admitted something very important. He does not know. Now, as we get into this debate, I will be bringing forward church fathers who talk about the Trinity, who talk about uh, the, the concept of the Trinity. And we've got to understand that there is a, a movement 
in terms of the progression Thank you very much. Of, of Christian self-identification as it moves through history that all religions do. The doctrine of the Trinity is taken from Genesis to Revelations, which clearly teaches the following precepts. That there is one God that we should worship, that God is one, and that there is only one God. Which means that everything else that we know about God has to fit into that monotheistic paradigm. And then in the New Testament, it's very clear. Jesus is God. The Holy Spirit is God. The Father is God. Now clearly, clearly, if there is only one God, then when it says